Hey everyone, Reed here. I want to talk to you today about three essential Power Query transformations that I've learned to review with any query I'm creating. I'll briefly discuss the whys and then show you a short demo of the hows in the Query Editor. Each of these techniques are very easy to apply and will result in a more optimized data model and therefore report. The first technique is selecting columns. The only columns in your report should be the ones that are or will be needed based on the report requirements. The second technique is filtering rows. Filtering only to the data you need will reduce the rows, which reduces the size of the report and makes any aggregations or calculations run faster for your users. Last but not least is changing your data types. It's good to double check that all the data types are correct, especially for numbers and dates. Otherwise, calculations may not work correctly in the model. Now, there will be times where you won't need to apply all of these techniques, depending on how cleaned or transformed the data is that is coming in, but it is still a good practice to review them regardless. All right, let's hop into the query editor and apply these. So I have in front of me a generic data set, and to start with, I'm going to go ahead and do the select columns action. Now what I could do with any of these is I do have the option to right click on any of the columns and I can remove them by selecting the remove option here which will delete that column. I find as a better practice it's more helpful to select the columns you want to keep. So in this case I'm going to come up here to choose columns and I'm going to deselect all of the columns at the top unchecking the select all columns button and then just pick a couple here arbitrarily. There we are. Hit OK. And that has now filtered the columns down to the, just those three. It added applied step over on the right. Now an important distinction for this is this means that now it is locked into these columns. So that way if any other columns come into the query in the future, I have to come back here and edit it to add those columns in. So it provides a nice lock and safety net around the query itself when it gets loaded into the data model. Now the next thing to do as well is to filter the data and that's accomplished easily enough by hitting any, by selecting any of the down arrows that are over here for any of these. In this case, I can just go ahead and make a couple selections for store key right here. Select three of those that filter the rows down. And last but not least, we can go ahead and use the little icons up here on any of these columns to change the data type and just confirm that it is a data type that we would want. So unit price, as an example, I would want to set as a fixed decimal number just because that is a currency and that locks it into no more than five decimal places, which also can help to reduce the size of the data. There we are. And easy as that. Three techniques that were just applied to this table. Now there's a lot of variations within it that I'll let you explore on your own, but it's three essential things that I make sure to at least consider or review every time I add a new query and therefore table into my data model. So I hope you found this useful. It's not too complicated and they're very easy to apply, but I think it's a good set of essential reviews to have anytime you are connecting a new data source into your model. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button below or leave a comment. And if you want to see more of these videos, please click the subscribe button as well at the bottom. And with that being said, I will see you in our next video.